We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey. And share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Rains here are sparse and the terrain is harsh. But despite climate change that actually threatens the livelihood of farmers, Kenyan women demonstrate that adapting to it can bring some success. Kiatuni is a quiet village in Machakos County. The climate here is dry and there is not much rain. Most families have to go far searching for water. We are here to meet 41-year-old Anne Mutua, a mother of five, who lives on this one and a half acre farm with her husband Mutua and their daughters. Working hard on their shamba, she grows many crops, including pigeon peas, popos, bananas, oranges, mangoes, and lemons, which she sells at the local market. But she has been having some problems and needed expert advice. So we have come to see what we can do to help. Mutua and Anne, thank you so much for welcoming us to your farm. Yeah, and I'll start by asking, between the two of you, who is the farmer or who does the farming? It's Anne. It's Anne. So Anne, you're the farmer. Oh, good. <laughs> so what do you grow on the farm? I plant some fruits, mm -hmm. mangoes, pacatos, purples, uh -huh. oranges, and the bananas. And I saw a greenhouse there. What do you do with it? I plant tomatoes, and the remaining of them were infected with white flies. Mm -hmm. So I tried, at long last, they fell. And Mutua, what do you do? Me, I really do teaching. Mm -hmm. And at times I assist her in uh, uh, the work of uh, farming. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you teach and farm? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, do, you, do you enjoy the farming? Yeah, I really like it. I have a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really support uh, my wife because she also likes it. That's nice, yeah. that's nice. So what challenges are you facing when you are farming? Well, there are so many challenges that uh, we are facing uh, around this area. The rains are not uh, adequate. Yes. Uh, we usually have them within almost three months or so. So the better part of the year, we have to strain looking for water here and there. Mm -hmm. The soil is not so fertile. Eh? Mm. And so we also have to look for manure, fertilizer, and the like. Mm. Because of the drought, uh, the growth of the plants take long to mature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also have the cattle, where we have to look for uh, pasture and uh, other necessities like water and so on, so from uh, quite a distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Enyo Mutua and Anne, yeah. uh, we have come with experts who are going to help you okay. and advise you on what you can do and what we can do with your soil and what you can grow. Mm -hmm. So there's hope. Yeah, we yes. really appreciate. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for your concern. Mm. And around here, we do not have experts at per se. Yes. Mm. We are forced to go for somebody from afar. Well, Shamba Shepa has come to you. <laughs> okay, thank <laughs> you. Okay, thank you, okay, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Anne uses manure from her cows on her crops and a little fertilizer. To help us, soil cares have come to visit in their mobile soil testing truck. To collect a good soil sample, you'll need a soil auger or a panga. Insert the auger or panga straight into the soil about 20 centimeters deep. Turn the auger and then pull it out carefully with the soil. Place the soil in the sample bag. Do this 20 times across your shamba in a zigzag pattern to get a good sample. We take the sample to the lab and wait for the results. <laughs> Timoth, I can see you have the results for the soil test. Yes. Could you give us the results, please? According to your results, you wanted to grow tomatoes. 
Uh, you have a pH of 5.1. For tomatoes, that is not favorable. You need a pH of about 5.5 to 6.5. An average of 6 will be good. So we recommend that you use agricultural lime for your soil. Yeah. Then uh, we go to the soil fertility. Nitrogen is too low in your farm. Phosphorus is also too low in your farm. You have enough potassium and micronutrients. So yeah. for you to have uh, the soils gain a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus, you're going to use a fertilizer, NPK of 23, 23 from May. And then on top dressing for your tomatoes, you shall use NPK 17, 17, 17. That one will give you a balance, balanced nutrients for your soil. We understand. Uh, then your soil health, organic carbon, uh, you are commendable because it seems you are feeding your soil well with organic manure. So yeah. your soil is good. However, you need to continue doing this to have increased productivity in future. We also recommend on other alternative crops that you can grow on your farm. Yeah. So our recommendation is that you can plant tubers. After having tested her soil, we wanted to teach Anne and Mutua how to plant tomatoes and manage the pests and diseases. Anne had had a lot of problems with pests in her greenhouse. We invited Paul from Syngenta to take a look at what could be done. Uh, Mr. Monzia, Anne here started planting tomatoes. That was her first plant in the greenhouse. Okay. They did very well. The second time, they did very badly from the white fly. Yeah? What could that be the problem? What she was meant to do to manage the, the white fly, mm -hmm. first of all, is to look on the environment. Secondly, is to manage the white fly with the right or the correct pesticide. We normally use Actara, mm -hmm. which in, for the first time we, we normally do the drenching, then you do the actual spray mm -hmm. with an interval of three weeks. Right. So how important is the crop rotation? Actually, the, the rotation of the crop is very important because of one thing. When also you are doing the rotation, you must put in your mind the kind of the crop you, you want to alternate with. It should not be of the same family okay. with the original crop. Yeah. Otherwise, they will be sharing the same diseases, mm. pests. Start by watering the bed. Then, wearing protective gear, drench each hole with a tara using directions on the packet. After that, mix manure and fertilizer with the soil in each hole using fertilizer recommended in the soil test. Then, plant the tomatoes. The actara will protect against pests, and the fertilizer will give the plant a good start in life. Anne has a number of livestock on her farm. She's got rabbits, chickens, goats, and cows as well. She recently bought a new cow, hoping to increase her milk production, but that has not happened yet. We asked Baraza from Coopers to help Anne do better. Mr. Baraza, you've seen Anne's cows. What do you think of them? I'd like to know which breed do you have here, Anne? We have Prussian and... Is Prussian or not? She doesn't know. know that he's a crossbreed. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you, Baraza, does the breed of a cow determine its productivity? Yes, Tony. The breed of a cow determines its productivity. It has known that genetics play a big role in determining how much milk production you're going to achieve as a dairy farmer. Because I know Anne is targeted to get a high quality of milk. Yeah. And the breed that we have matters a lot. Yeah. So as you as a farmer, to determine which kind of a bull, which kind of a semen you're going to use on your animal to achieve your dream cow. In uh, selecting semen, yeah. one thing is production. Yeah. You want to know, this bull I'm giving to my animal, how much milk does it produce per year? Yeah. So with that, you're able to, to know how much the bull will transmit to your calf. Yeah. Yes. And the important thing you need to note is confirmation. Like uh, the picture I have here as an example to show you what you're going to check on in terms of confirmation is, I'm going to check things like uh, stature. Yeah. Stature is uh, the size of the animal. So stature is from the height of the animal, from the hind foot yeah. to the ram. You don't want to have tall animals, too much tall animals, because very tall animals, they feed a lot and they produce maybe average. You use a lot of money to feed it to achieve the milk production. And also, you don't want to have very short animal because very short animals, that means that if you feed a li little, then they produce little. So you just want to have average height of the animal. 
Another thing also information you check at the udder. You don't have a cow that has very long udder, pendulous udder, because very long udders will predispose animal to mastitis. Good udder is very important also. The other thing when it's choosing semen you need to base on an is look at uh, the health and fertility of the bull you are going to choose. So because you want to have healthy heifers, healthy cows, that one will save you on the cost of veterinary drugs you're going to use. Yeah. The other thing when you're choosing semen is I want to look at uh, longevity. Longevity means is, means how long will you stay with that cow on your farm. Yeah. So you want a bull that to increase the lifespan of your heifers. Yeah. It will means that gene that makes the heifers to stay for a long time in your farm so that it can give you many calves in its lifespan. So, if you want to buy a cow, remember, don't buy the biggest cow you can find. Buy an average size cow, which will eat less than a big cow and give more milk than a small cow. The back should be straight and the udder should be wide and deep. Fresh and cows give the most milk but need the most feed. Jazzy cows eat much less but give more milk per kilo of feed than freshians. Try to find the best breed for your budget. Of all the things I've said, you need semen that is reliable. Semen that will give your cows reliability so that if the cows you get, they're easy to keep and they use, they feed little and they give you more. Yeah. Yes. So I'm asking you, where can I get that? That semen, that, semen that, uh, yeah. that meets those requirements, I'll tell you. Yeah. In Coopers, we have semen from Holland. Yeah. It's called CRVs, Holland Genetics, yeah. that has those characteristics that I've talked about. Yeah. This semen is all over Kenya, and we have seminators that use those semen. So as a farmer, you need to have a seminar that you can trust and insist on using Cooper Holland Genetics. Yeah. Cooper supply good semen for AI. Using AI is better than using a bull, as you can choose any bull you want to get the right type of calf for your farm. This will help you grow your farm as a business every year. Baraza went on to tell us about feeding. Genetics plays like 30% of, of production. So the rest 60% is about management. So I'm supposed to put measures to ensure that the 60% that is remaining is achieved. This is all about feeding the animals the right nutrients. Yeah. You need to feed animals the balanced diet. Give it energy, give it proteins, and give it minerals. I've gone around your farm, I've seen you have mulberry. And I don't know whether you knew that mulberry is a fodder crop. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't know? Yeah. Mulberry is also a fodder crop that can give cheap proteins to your farm. Yeah. If you can't get enough from mulberry, you can still give cupacula nutrition. Like your animals here, they don't have calves. So you want to fertilize them so they can be able to get the, the right nutrients so that you can come on heat the time supposed to come on heat and give it Holland genetics. Yeah. For the cow, give Cooper Cooler according to the amount of milk you get. Start by giving 100 grams and add more as the milk increases using the instructions on the packet. Also give the cow 4 tablespoons of Maclick Super every morning and again in the evening. These supplements will give the cow all the protein and minerals she needs to make lots of milk. With the right supplements, plenty of feed and good clean water Anne's milk supply will soon increase. Well, there's still lots to be done right here on Shamba Shape Up. Ah, we've covered a lot on this farm. Oh, yes. Yeah. And now it's time for us to have a water break. Shamba Shape Up! Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are still in Kiatuni area in Machakos County, shaping up Ann and Mutua's shamba. Before the break, we tested the soil and now we know what fertilizer to use. A top crop expert has shown Ann and Mutua how to manage their greenhouse and to plant tomatoes. And the dairy cow now has had a boost. There's still lots to be done. So let's get on with it. Anne has to travel all the way to Machakos to buy chemicals for her crop, which is difficult and costs money. Sometimes, to save on costs, she buys the chemicals from a dealer closer to home. 
but this is not the right way to do it. As we learn from our friends at Pest Control Products Board, PCPB, who took Anne to an agro dealer to learn more. Anne has called our neighbors to also hear from the expert, as thick chemicals are a big problem for all of them. Now, my dear farmers, uh, I know you have come, you already know your problem, and you already know the kind of pesticide you buy. That is very important. You must know your problem, and then you also know the kind of pesticide you are going to buy. The other important thing is you must buy it from an accredited shop, so that you get a pesticide that is going to help you. We know that there are some shops that sell fake pesticides. When you are inside the shop, first thing you look at is the accreditation certificate there from AAK and CropLife. That one tells you that this shop is already accredited. And why is it accredited? It's because of the license here, Pest Control Products Board. When these two are there, it shows you that this shop has been inspected and it has passed the inspection and it is a good shop you can buy your products. Uh, the most important thing you do is you ask for the product. And when you get the product, check whether it is well sealed. You can see the product is well sealed, the way the label looks like. You also look for the PCPB number, this number here. And also you check the issue of expiry. Don't buy a product that's expired, so you'll check the, what is the shelf life here, it says two years. And then where do we check? At the back here, when was one of this manufactured? 2013. 2013. So shelf life is two years. When will this one expire? 2020. So this one is still valid. So you buy a product that is valid and you have already checked. And we, have, we told you that we have done uh, inspection and accreditation. These are people who buy good products. The other thing is when you have bought your product, if the product is too cheap, think twice. Cheap products are expensive because the people who are selling you cheap products are not selling you the good products. Once you have bought your product, yeah, you must get a receipt. Like this receipt, it has the name of the shop, the address, and all that. Can you look at it? Why do you insist that you must have a receipt? Is that suppose the product does, does not work, we can go back and trace it back we we'll come to the shop, tell them this product was bought from here, we look at the batch number, and we shall follow up to the factory to know why this product is not working. So it's very important to get a receipt. If you don't get a receipt, it will be very difficult for us to help you to follow it back. Besides working on the farm, Anne has to prepare meals for her family at the end of the day. I've been around the farm. She doesn't have any vegetables. I wonder what she feeds her daughters with. I think she needs an expert. I'll get her one. So Juliet, what do you have for us today? I brought you a variety of vegetables, supplying different vitamins, okay. and also some tubers that supply a lot of calcium and okay. also energy because your children are growing. Also, you need energy because you are working hard in this home. Actually, when I was working, through the chamber, I've not seen any vegetable, any kind of vegetable. Where do you get your vegetables? I get them at market. What type of vegetables do you get from the market? Sukuma wiki, spinach, kitongu. At what cost per bunch? Sukuma I get for one bunch, 10 bob. Spinach, one bunch, 20 bob. Kitungu. One bunch I get for five bob. Do you have any source of water here? Yeah. I think you can grow nice ones for yourself and they'll be cheaper and they'll be available all the time that you need them because vegetables are very essential for our family. Okay. Yeah, I have spinach. Yeah. And uh, my method of planting spinach, I'm planting them in a bag. Yeah. A bag that is taking a population of 60 seedlings yeah. around it and inside on top it's taking some onions like 10 pieces and per week it's just using 20 liters of water. Mm. Per week, seven days, mm. 20 liters of water. You see it's economical. Yeah. And if you take a big bag like this one, you can even sell and get an income from the same garden. Okay. Because this one takes a population of 100 seedlings okay. and your family cannot take all that. Yeah. Right. Is there a reason why we are planting in the, in the bags? Yeah, the reason why we are planting in bags is that the water that she has is very little. She cannot use overhand sprinkler. She cannot use a pipe to water the, the bags because the water is very little. Okay. And also the time that she is going to use to tender 
these vegetables will be minimal because like 10 minutes you will be have watered and wind the crops mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. another thing here yeah, a different plant or a different vegetable has a different nutrients i've brought to you another plant called moringa i've seen it before yeah this, 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 this. this is the seed ring yeah i've seen it you have seen it? Yeah, and I planted it there somewhere. Oh, you yeah. have? Uh, I mix how do you cook it? I mix with the vegetables like skuma. Yeah. I put there, I mix it and I cook them. Wow, that's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. When it's during rainy season, you can harvest all the leaves, okay. dry them, okay. crush them, you mm. get a nice powder and mm. you'll be using it, you adding it to your meals. Moringa also has another benefit. Because here yeah, you don't have piped water, you don't know the certainty or the cleanness of that water, you can also purify your water using moringa seed. You crush the seed, you put in your water, you stir, you leave it for 30 minutes, and your water will be clean. Okay. Yeah, and also when you are cleaning your vegetables, you use clean water that has been purified by moringa seed. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you can't eat vegetables alone. You must eat something else to make a complete diet. I brought you a nice sweet potato. This is the orange sweet potato. It has a lot of calorie that is in carrot. You can heat it raw. You can use it to make your stew. You can also use it to make chapati. It's highly nutritious. So, and you've had it? Yeah. yeah. So, Julia, I can't talk about nutrition without going to the kitchen. To keep all the healthy vitamins in the vegetables, wash the vegetables with clean water. Then, put the vegetables in a sieve over a pan of boiling water and cover the vegetables. And only cook them for 5 minutes. Your vegetables will be bright, healthy and full of goodness for your family. After all the hard work we've done on this shamba, it's time to say goodbye to this family. And we are sure when we get back, we'll find a healthy, strong family with good milk for sale and lots of tomatoes. Shamba Shep Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashepup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shep Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shep Up. Thank you.